Hi everyone and welcome to week one. This is Clo3D for fashion. The objective of this video is to get you orientated with the user interface of Clo3D and by the end of this lesson you should be able to block construct a basic pencil skirt, arrange it onto a 3D model and simulate that model. This is a revision video and is not going to go through each step but instead is just going to provide an overview of some of the content we've already covered in class. This video is created for students who already have experience in pattern making and are familiar with the Winfred Outridge block construction methods. Okay, great, let's get into it. So on our right hand side, we have the 2D panel and the 2D panel is where we'll do all our pattern making. We've got our 2D panel toolbar on the right hand side and then on the left hand side, we've got the 3D area and this is where we can orbit around an avatar and sketch and drape onto a 3D mannequin. So the first thing we do when we jump into Clo3D is we need to insert an avatar. So on your left hand side panel, you'll see the word avatar. Double click on this and you'll see that down the bottom, it'll open up the filing system for the avatar. Now you can insert whatever avatar you like. There's female, male, kids, metahumans and other 3D shapes. If there's not an avatar within this panel that you want, then you can jump online and download a model to insert. I'm just going to go with the basic female one. I'm going to double click into the file system and double click on the model to import it into our space. Great. Now that we've inserted our avatar, it's time to get uh, a bit of an understanding of how we can navigate within this space. So I'm using a MacBook today. So to pan across, I can hold in my option button and this allows me to pan across in both windows. If you're using a PC, it's best to use a, a kind of a, a mouse and I recommend using a mouse if you're using a Mac as well. That way you can click down on your scrolling wheel and this will enable you to pan. To rotate or orbit around the 3D space, for me on a Mac, I can right click and I can orbit around this 3D model. On a PC, you should also be able to right click and orbit around this model. You can change all these key systems in your preferences under settings. Uh, preferences and you can change the different shortcuts uh, to suit you. Uh, but this is kind of the default methods when you jump into the space. Okay, great. Let's have a look at the 2D panel. This is where you'll do most of your pattern making. Uh, as I explained in class, most students generally pattern make their garments in StyleCAD or Lectura Madaris and then they would import their patterns into this space and basically just sew them together. But you can also pattern make in Clo3D. Uh, and I'm going to kind of familiarize with you with some of these tools to enable you to pattern make. Uh, the good thing about Clo3D is if you're ever unsure about a tool, you can hover over it and there will be a manual uh, and a video selection that you can click on to as well. So within the 2D panel, we've got our transform pattern uh, tool, which is kind of like the selection tool in Adobe Illustrator. The shortcut is A and the selection tool allows you to kind of select an entire object or pattern. Um, so this enables you to kind of move patterns around um, and move a whole pattern around. One button down below, the edit pattern, which the shortcut is Z. This enables you to select direct anchor points or line segments um, and also select uh, like handles and things to control curves. This is very similar to the direct selection tool in Illustrator. So if you've used Adobe Illustrator before, some of the functions within this software are very similar. Uh, on the 2D panel, you can also click and hold down on your edit pattern selection tool. And then within this panel here, we've also got a variety of different tools that we'll be using today, uh, such as the smooth curve, add point line, edit curve point, um, which are all really helpful and very similar to Adobe Illustrator. Uh, skipping down past this one, we're going to have a look at this in week two. We're going to jump down to the polygon tool, which is uh, letter H for the shortcut. The polygon tool is kind of like the pen tool in Adobe Illustrator. So it enables you to draw line segments and anchor points to create a pattern. And we'll be using that tool to do some block construction today. So behind the polygon tool, you've also got your rectangle, ellipse and spiral. So when we're doing some block construction today, we'll generally start with the rectangle. Great, so the objective of today's video is that we will be creating a pencil skirt. Um, this is a really easy pattern to do. It's a classic pencil skirt and it'll introduce you to kind of drawing some patterns within the 2D panel space and simulating garments in the 3D space. 
So the first thing we need to do is we need to get some measurements. So I've got my avatar in here and I need to do some measurements to check what her size is. So then we can block construct from there. The good thing about Clo 3D is you can actually customize the avatar and the size to however you want. You can do this by navigating to the top of the screen uh, and navigating to avatar. And under avatar, you can actually select avatar editor. And this enables you to edit every single measurement point within this avatar. So you could do a custom uh, block for someone such as a friend, uh, or if you're doing custom fitting for a client. Today, I'm just gonna stay with the standard stock basic avatar that's been imported into this space. So to get the measurements, I'm going to come over to my 3D space and I'm going to hover over the avatar display. I'm then going to come down and select show avatar measurements. This will add all the measurement points to my model. So if we're doing a basic skirt, um, I'm not gonna do a high-waisted skirt, I'm gonna do a, a drop-waisted skirt. So I can click on this point here and I can see that the drop waist here at the moment is about 80 centimeters. I'm also going to need my hip measurement. So I can click down below and I can see here that it's 95 centimeters. And then I also need to know the distance between uh, kind of the waist and the hip. Um, and in terms of block construction, this is generally about 18, 19, 20 centimeters. So there's no really need for me to do a measurement there. But if I did need to do a measurement, I could grab my measurement tools. But we'll have a look at that in week two. Great, so I've got my measurements. I know that the drop waist is 80 centimeters. The waist to hip is about 20 centimeters. My hips are 95. And the length of the skirt is up to you. It changes with styles, but I'm probably going to do about 65 centimeters uh, just above the knees there. Great, so I'll turn off my measurement points and I'm gonna jump over to my 2D space to start doing some block construction. So today I'm gonna to be using the Winfred Outridge method, uh, but obviously you could use the Helen Armstrong block construction method. And generally when you're block constructing, either in StyleCAD, Lectra Madara, Adobe Illustrator, any of these kind of platforms, you do have to alter the method slightly. So it's always kind of up to you. Generally, you know, I've come up with my own methods of block construction in these digital spaces, but the principles are always the same. Uh, so I guess this goes without saying, but if you're a terrible manual pattern maker, then digital pattern making is just gonna make you a faster, terrible pattern maker. So it's really important to make sure you master those manual pattern making skills before you jump into a digital space. Great, so I'm gonna click and hold down on my polygon tool and I'm gonna select rectangle. In my 2D space, I'm gonna click once and it will give me a dialog box here to enable me to select uh, what kind of length of rectangle I want. So if we're doing the Winfred Outridge method, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the width at about 49.5 and the height I'm going to do 65 centimeters. And the reason I'm doing that uh, is because 65 centimeters is the length of the skirt and the width of the skirt there is because I've divided the waist into two and I'll press okay. And this will give us our kind of block construction square here. So we're going to turn this into a front and back skirt pretty much. So the next step we need to do is we need to add in the hip line point from the top of the rectangle. So we measured this before, uh, which was about 20 centimeters, 20, 18, 19. You know, you can kind of put them at any varying lengths there. I'm gonna put mine at around 17 centimeters. So what I'm going to do is on my right hand side here on the edit pattern, click and hold down and add point. I'm then gonna come over and I'm gonna hover on this line. And you can either do this by eye and put in your point, but I'm gonna right click and it'll give me my dialog box. And then I can see the yellow, um, which co correlates to this line and the blue, which correlates to this line. So I'm going to add in, I know that I wanna come down uh, 17 centimeters. So you can see now that I've added in a point here, which is 17 centimeters from the top here. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw an internal line straight across, so I'm gonna square that across, and therefore we have our hip line. So on my 2D panel, uh, I can select the internal polygon line, which is just below the polygon tool. I'll select, click once, 
and I'm going to drag straight across and then I'll press enter to insert that line. So this puts in our waistline. Along the waistline, I'm going to measure one fourth of the hip and then I'm going to add, you know, a centimeter and a half uh, for some ease. So again, I'm going to grab my add point tool. I'm going to right click so I get the dialogue and I'm going to put in my measurement of 25.25 and I'll press OK. And then I'm going to square up and down using my internal line once again. So I'll square up and press enter and I'll square down and press enter. So you can see our skirt block is starting to shape up here now. We've got our back side of the skirt here and the front side of our skirt. We've got our hip line and we've got our center side seam here. You can press shift to make sure that these lines are 100% straight and I can see by eye that that one there is not straight. So I'm just going to add in this one once again. So we've got a more straight line there. Perfect. Great. So now that I've got uh, both my side seams, all that I've got left to do now is to add in the waist uh, and add in my darts. So from the right hand side waist, I'm going to draw in the back side seam, uh, which is a point at around 24 centimeters, uh, which is a quarter of the waist plus, you know, 2.5 centimeters ease. It's up to you, uh, I guess at the end of the day, <laughs> how much ease you want to add to your block. Um, so I'll go 24 and let's see what that brings me. Um, I actually might do a little bit less. I'm going to do 23, 22. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Once you've done this after a while, you can kind of start to see how the block's going to shape up. So, and in terms of ease, I might do 21.5. It's looking good to me. Great. And then I'm also going to do the same for the front. So I'll right click and this one here, I am going to add a little bit less. Great, perfect. So you can see here I've got my two uh, waists, waist points here. So this side's going to be the back and this side's going to be the front. And I'm just going to manually adjust these points ever so slightly. We want the back to have a little bit more ease front to have a little bit less. So I think it's looking, it's looking okay there. Great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my internal line tool and I'm going to draw a line from here to here and draw a line from here to here. So from here you can start to see that the back box coming together and the front box coming together. What we do need to do is we need to curve these lines a little bit. So I'm going to select uh, and select from behind my edit pattern tool come down to edit curve point and I'm just going to pull out just ever so slightly you might need to zoom in a little bit to add in just a little bit of curveness through there perfect now what I'm going to do is I need to cut out some of these shapes so I need to start to split these blocks into two so I'm going to grab my edit pattern tool I'm going to hover over this center side seam line. I'm going to right click and I'm going to select cut, which is great. And then I'm going to come up the top here. I'm also going to cut this one by right clicking. So now you can see we've separated the front and back together. Uh, I'll come up here and I'm also going to hover over this line. Right click, cut, right click, cut. So you can start to see the, the patterns are shaping up now. I can delete this wedge. Perfect. Now we do need to raise up these uh, lines here to make sure that we've got our kind of curved waistline. So I'm gonna grab my edit pattern tool and this point here, I'm going to raise by about, um, you know, it's, up to you in terms of the Winfred Outreach pattern block. I'm not here to teach you pattern making. I'm just here to teach you how to use it in the digital space. So I'm going to raise mine up by, you know, 1.5 ish, maybe two ish centimeters. So 
going to go up about 1.2, 1.2, great, and I'll do the same on the other side, 1.2, beautiful, great, and then the next thing we need to do is, uh, and actually the final thing we need to do is add in our dark points. So again, I'm going to come over to my edit pattern tool, click and hold down, and I'm going to grab add point slash split line. I'll come over to the back and I'll right click. And this time, instead of adding in some measurements to split the waistline, I'm going to come down and go a uniform split. And we know that we have two darts at the back of the skirt block. So I'm going to add in uh, three line segments and press OK. So you can see now I've got two evenly spaced points uh, that I can turn into darts on the back. And on the front, we only have one dart. So I'm just gonna do a uniform split of two and press okay. So now I've got a one dart point in there and two dart points at the back. I'm then gonna go back to my edit pattern point. I'm gonna right click on this back point and go add dart. This dart's uh, width is two centimeters and I'm going to uh, add this back one uh, for a memory. I think it's about uh, 14 centimeters in, in length. Oh, change that to two. Length, 14. Looks slightly bit big. Perhaps we'll do 13. Press OK and Enter. And then you can see, oops, I've lost my other point. Uh, so again, I'll just go back in and select here. Let's go uniform split and press OK. And I'll grab my edit pattern, right click, add dart, uh, two centimeters, and this one I think is gonna be 12. And press enter. Great, so I've got my two back darts, and then I need to do my front dart. So again, right click, add dart. Now the front one from memory, I think is about two centimeters and about uh, 11 centimeters on the front, about 12-ish. Again, <laughs> you can kind of have a look at your own block and just determine um, what you think is best. Uh, you can see here, I've got a sharp kind of point here, so I do need to smooth that out. But here, ideally, now we've got what is known as our back block and our front block, which is fantastic. Uh, so I'm just gonna grab my selection tool and I'm gonna move my black back block over here and I'll move my front block at the front. Now the front block we know doesn't have any seam down the center front. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab my edit pattern tool. I'm going to delete this internal line because we don't really need that anymore. And I'm gonna right click on this center front line and select unfold. And this is going to create a symmetric pattern for us. Then on the backhand side here, we do have a center back seam because we're gonna, going to need to add a zip in this area, but we do need two. <laughs> so I'm gonna come up and grab my selection tool. I'm gonna to right click and go symmetric with sewing, or you can go symmetric pattern, up to you. I'm just lazy, I don't wanna to have to sew twice. <laughs> and then I've got a front and back there. Perfect, now you'll notice that when you're making a pattern making the 2D panel, it doesn't correlate to the 3D panel. And this is uh, by nature, it's not, it's not broken or anything like that. Um, you can just move these pattern pieces around. You can actually just drag them around. Perfect, so now that we've block constructed, it's time to start some sewing. So our patterns are all finished. Um, they're ready to go. I haven't put any seam allowance on them um, because I'm not gonna print these patterns out. Generally, I do my, all my pattern making in StyleCAD and then I'd import my patterns in here. So. I generally don't use this as a pattern making software. I generally just use it to kind of have a look and um, simulate fabrics in here to see what the garment might possibly look like. But you know, obviously you could get pretty good at doing some block constructions in here. And, and we've block constructed a skirt from scratch here today. So, you know, obviously you would generally have a block that you'd be creating a style from. Okay, so now let's arrange it on the body and see what's happening. Uh, there is one pattern piece that I haven't made yet, which I should which is the waistband. So it's quite easy to make a waistband, it's just a rectangle. So I do need to grab my measurements though. So with my edit pattern tool, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select half of the front skirt, 
hold shift, select half of the back skirt. And you can see on my mouse here that it does the measurements for me. So I need a waistband, which is 35 centimeters. Uh, let's make that 36. And then the length is determined, you know, um, 36 and the height about four centimeters. I'll press okay. And we'll need two waistbands. So I'll just copy and paste that. Perfect, let's do some sewing now, which is the kind of fun part of this program. So in order to dress the model, we need to turn on our uh, arrangement points within the 3D panel. So on the left-hand side, I'm gonna come over and select uh, avatar display and select show avatar points. And this creates a uh, kind of funky <laughs> blue spots all around the body of the 3D panel. But basically what this is doing is it's, it's telling the computer where we want to place these fabrics and these pattern pieces. So in the 3D panel, I'm going to select my pattern. I'm going to click once and let go. I'm not dragging over to the body. And then I'm just going to hover over these blue dots until I find one that I think is going to sit on the body correctly. So I'm going to select that one. Uh, because that one's looking pretty good. Now, if your pattern doesn't directly sit on the body correctly, you can use the gizmo to move things around. So I can select this pattern and, you know, with the red, I could make it move forward and back. With the green, up and down. I can rotate it. So you can use the gizmo in those methods as well. I'm going to select my back pattern piece and I'm going to turn around and again, I'm going to hover over. And you can see here that we you know, the anchor, the, the placement points have added this too close to the body. So I can select this pattern with my gizmo and I'm just going to move them out a little bit. So that we've got some room there for the fullest part of the hip. <laughs> uh, I also need to arrange my waist, uh, my waistband. So again, you know, you can do your waistband however you like. I'm just going to Go half by half. Great, so once you've arranged everything around the body, you can turn off the arrangement points, like so. So we've got everything arranged around the body. It is looking that maybe I might not have calculated the waistband measurements too great, but <laughs> we'll see how it comes together. The good thing about this is um, I've done this block in knitted fabric, so it's destined to fit anyways. So now that we've arranged our pieces around the body, it's time to sew, and this is probably the best part of the program. So on your 3D panel side, you'll see here that we've got a variety of different tools. We've got a sewing selection tool, which allows us to edit our sewing. We've got the line segment tool. This enables us to sew uh, kind of straight lines and, and curved lines that don't have too many points in it. And then we have the free sewing, and this enables us to sew anywhere, basically, so uh, across multiple points. For me, you can see that I've block constructed here with not too many points, but I'm going to show you both methods of how you could sew. Okay, I'm going, and you can select these tools both in the 2D side and the 3D side. I generally like to sew in the 3D side because it just uh, it makes more sense for me and I can navigate a little bit easier. So I'm going to grab my line segment tool. And you can see here that the darts are automatically sew together. Um, you can see that by the colors indicated. The only one that hasn't seemed to sew together is this dart here. But let's just see how we go. Hopefully he decides to sew or I'll, I'm just going to tell it to sew. Um, hopefully we don't have any glitches there. Great, so in terms of telling the computer where to sew, you can just hover over the side seam. So in a skirt, obviously we need to sew the side seams together and we need to sew the waist together. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna select on one side and then I'm gonna hover over to the other side and double click to finish. Now you can twist seams in Clo 3 d so it's really important that when you're sewing, you're not getting this twisted seam here. Um, just like what you can do on the sewing machine in real life, you can do it on the computer as well. So make sure that your notches here are matching up. And I'm going to do this side and this side. So this is what is known as line segment tool. Uh, the other way you can sew in this program is the free, the free sewing. And the way this works is you click and you drag down over that line. 
So this is good if you've got multiple points um, in one line. Double click to finish, and then you click and drag on this side. The free sewing um, is not my favorite tool to use. I generally use line segment and I remove most of my anchor points um, where possible. Great, okay, now that we've just got to sew on the waistband. So, grab my line segment tool. We need to sew the fronts together. We need to sew the backs together. And we also need to sew um, this side of the skirt over here and this side of the waistband onto this side of the skirt here, which is probably the most complex part. <laughs> so the easiest way to do this is, um, what I'm going to do is I need to add in an anchor point halfway here. So I'll just go uniform two, and I'll do the same on the other side. Right click, uniform split two, great. With my sewing tool, I'll grab my line segment tool. Oh, it doesn't quite look like those points were added. There we go, now it's in. And uniform split again. Great, so now you can see I've divided those. Obviously, you know, depending on how you do your waistband, um, you could do it all different ways. So I'm gonna collect, select, select on this side of the waistband. And to sew, to sew across multiple areas, you can hold in shift. So I'm going to hold shift, click, and hold shift and click. So those two are going to sew together. Hold shift. Sew at multiple points. Spin this around, do it on the same side. Uh, see, you don't want to twist anything like this, so I'm going to undo that. Great, so once you're confident enough that you've sewn everything, uh, now comes the fun part where you get to simulate. So to simulate, you can press the simulation button up here, or you can also press the space bar. Perfect. So you can see here that we've made our skirt. Oops, bit of a mistake. I um, Obviously, you can see that I have forgotten to sew uh, the center back seam. So this is really good because what I can do now is I can undo this and we can uh, sew the back seam. So to undo or to reset your 3D uh, orientation, down here on your left-hand side, you can select this button, which is Reset 3D Arrangement, and that'll put all your pattern pieces back in place. So, silly Jai forgot to add this thing. Okay, let's simulate again. Perfect. So we're looking pretty good. Um, obviously, this is a, a, a low-waisted skirt, so it's a little bit... Uh, you know, it's not high waisted, so it's drop waisted, so it looks uh, a little bit different. But obviously, this is in stretch fabric at the moment. I can add it into a calico uh, or a cotton fabric by coming over to fabric, double clicking, coming down to something like a cotton, which is offers obviously a lot stiffer than what a stretch fabric would be like. Also add it to the waistband. Yeah, so you can see it's a lot stiffer, stiffer now. It doesn't really kind of drape as much. And there we go. We've made a pencil skirt. Obviously, you would need to put in the zip. Uh, you'd need to put in your sewing lines and your hem stitch lines. But we'll have a look at this in week two. Uh, so if you can get if you can get to this stage, um, you've done a pretty good job. Obviously, we also probably do need a bit of a split in this skirt as well, so this model can walk correctly. Uh, if I was to jump into Avatar and have a look at some motion to see how this dress might look in terms of motion, you can see that obviously it's going to ride up because there's no split in that back seam there, and it's too long. So. Uh, you know, that's something to take in for consideration, but that's something we can have a look at 
uh, week two to do some more complex things. So I hope you enjoyed this week and I hope that you were able to get through all the tasks. Um, you know, the objective of this video was to really get you navigated with the tools so that now that you can start to create some more complex uh, items within here. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you next week.